What's going on, fam? It's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lucky Murray, back with another CHH Now News Report. And yes, people, I've been out for a while, so I'm back, been rejuvenated. It's November, the elections are over, it's a lot of stuff that's going on. I'm not going to get into all the details, but you know what time it is. Before I keep going any further, please hit that like button, subscribe button. If you like the content that I do and bring, and yes, I bring content. And also, share the video if you like it, what you see. But I got to get into this. And man, before I get into work and go to work and all that stuff, you know what I'm talking about. It's been some things said when I took a break. I didn't watch any CHH news. I didn't look at any CHH outlets. I plugged out because I needed some time to think. Plugged back in a few days ago, and I saw that Ruslan and John Gibbs were in a little situation. A nutshell, if you haven't seen or you're sleeping underneath the rock like I was for the past month, Basically, John Gibbs came at Ruslan and said, hey, look, I feel like I was basically pimped in the situation. Everything was good until all eyes was on me. And then once all eyes on me, a major started to look at me. Then that's when things kind of went left. And now because of that, I don't even rap no more. I'm, I'm going to get into that real quick. And Ruslan had a video. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a snippet of Ruslan's video. And I'm going to also read john gives actual comments and i'm gonna give you my thoughts on it as well so let's get into this video man so as you can see this is a snippet of the video i'm going to have the video actually on the description below so go down to the description below watch the video let me play a snippet of what Ruslan said about this. It's an hour long, so it's not going to be in everything in context, but it's a. Well, well let, let's do this for let's do it real quick. Let's go to John Gibbs explanation uh, on his video. So basically, Rapzilla posted a video and this is John Gibbs Instagram post. So. Let me see. Yes. So it says story time in 2011, a year at the high school, I was fighting a drug case for possession with intent to sell and burglary burglary. I ended up paying for a solid lawyer and getting a getting a year's probation, getting years probation. I knew I had too much potential to be wasting life in and out of jail. So I got with this positive hip hop group called The Breaks and we became the Dream Junkies. It was cool at first because I was around dudes that would encourage me to stay out of that life and make music. Fast forward a few years later, and we're touring all over America. Ish is going great. It was quote unquote family business. So I thought then things took a turn when the spotlight came on me and major labels started reaching out. I noticed what I thought was quote unquote again, family business was in fact just business. Soon as the money came, and I was taken advantage of by a dude that shall remain nameless. We all know that's Ruslan. He basically put me in a position where I felt like he was trying to prostitute me and my artistry. Me being me, I couldn't go for that. So, boom, now I'm signed to a major label, but still stuck in a contract with an entertainment company. His turns were where he kept my masters for the Soul Rebel and for a season album. And he let me out of the contract. B.S. I knew after going through that I was really cool off rapping, mainly because I didn't want to come across bitter in my music. I started making more R&B music and trying to get over the misfortune I felt positive rap, quote unquote, brought me. Meanwhile, the major label is waiting for me to rap my butt off because they knew I could, in my rebellious ways, I couldn't oblige. My a and and I would go back and forth about for pretty much the duration of the time there. He would say, you have rap fans, so rap. I just couldn't get with it out of fear of being taken advantage of. But you know what they say, fear is false evidence appearing real. So fast forward today, and I want to give clarity to those who found me because of my raps and were disappointed when I stopped really giving you rap material. I also want to thank those who stayed down through my journey. I'm back rapping. I'm having fun with it. I'm working on a rap album, Unsisted and Fully Me at this point in time stay tuned i hope this don't go over y'all heads prayers up so this is what ruslan kind of says in a nutshell not the full intent but this is what he says let's play it real quick 
Let's talk about my mistakes. Very, very transparent with you guys. The actual mistakes I made. No fluff, no cap. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and dive into it. So first of all, let's, let's first discuss um, the, 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 the elephant in the room, masters, master recording. What is a master recording? A master recording is the actual recording of the audio file. Why does the master recording matter? Because the master recording is, uh, it's where the Spotify, the iTunes, all of that revenue comes from, right? All the revenue comes from the master side of the recording. There's also the publishing side. That's who wrote the songs. That's who pinned the songs. That's who made the beats. I just did the MP thing, thing right? Okay. So there's master recordings. There's 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 publishing. I've never never touched any of my artists. Publishing any artists I've ever worked with. That's important to note. Um, master recordings is how record labels earn their money. They earn the money from the record label. The standard situation is that the label owns the master, the artist. Um, the artist gets a royalty off the master, usually about 15 to 20%. That was not my standard situation with any artist. And by the way, the artist has to pay back their master from, pay back and recoup from their 15 to 20% royalty, right? That is not my situation. I'm gonna show you guys the situation right here. Okay, so uh, in 2000 and, um, 2018, uh, by the grace of God, I, I brought all of uh, our catalog over to DistroKid. Why is this good? I'll get into some of the details later on why this is DistroKid is good. Primarily because there's splits. Okay, primarily because there's splits, meaning that DistroKid pays people directly. So let's let's pull up the records. Uh, this is two. Oops. This is. Hold up. I'm trying to put myself in the screen here. Give me one sec, guys. Hey, if you're watching this live, uh, let me know where you're watching this from. I would appreciate that. Um, give this video a quick thumbs up. We'll get into uh, the specifics um, here in just a second. I just want to, I'm trying to superimpose myself into the shot. I know it's like, okay, cool. Boom. So I'm logged into our distro kid. So here's a record. This is, this record's called Four Seasons. Uh, Created February 28th. The record was uploaded January. Distro kid, anybody who's put out music knows that distro kid takes a couple months to, to pay out music. So boom. February 28th. Okay. Here is the, um, here is the record of Four Seasons. Here is Soul Rebel. Okay, you guys following along. Four Seasons, Soul Rebel. Now, um, again, master recordings. What is the master recording? Master recording is the revenue generated off of the, 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 the recording of the song. iTunes, Spotify, Distro, right? All that, all that, uh, s uh, Apple Music, you name it, right? That's the master recording. Now, check this out. The master recording here. I'm going to show you guys the splits. This is 2018. Before this, we were with TuneCore. I have the 1099s prior to TuneCore. Okay, here's the master recording. Boom. Let's go in here. Four seasons. Let's look at the splits. Oh, sales. Don't email me, by the way. Here's my email. And there is uh, Mr. Gibbs' email. Hey, John Gibbs. Um, the side. Y'all don't. Gosh, you guys are going to probably blow our emails up. Okay. 50-50. All my artists have a 50-50 split. This is 2018. It's 2018, 2019, 2020. This is three years ago. Three years ago, everything brought over to DistroKid. He's paid directly. Why is this dope? Because DistroKid pays directly. I don't have to do the accounting. DistroKid pays directly. Prior to this, we were going through TuneCore. I had to PayPal everybody. I have the 1099s for that. Now let's go over to uh, Soul Rebel. Here's Soul Rebel. Here is uh, the track list for Soul Rebel. We go here. Boom. Created uh, two, February 23rd, 2018. Here is Soul Rebel. Boom. Same thing. 50-50. 50% of the revenue. 50% of the revenue. So all of the revenue. The master is what? The Apple Music Spotify of the revenue. Right? Distro Kid controls the master recordings. The, the master licensing of the revenue. Uh, consistently paid on record. Through DistroKid directly, I stopped handling people's money, okay? Through DistroKid directly since 2018, prior to this, we were with TuneCore, okay? So uh, that's that's the master recording. So to say that I own anybody's master when they are getting directly paid from the master, uh, I don't know. Right down the middle, right down the middle, right, right down the middle, right there. Right. So we're going to come back at it real quick like so basically like i said i will want you to watch the full hour video and ruslan goes into details of the situation from his perspective where he went wrong with running a small boutique label king dreams entertainment and what he learned from that situation so uh, i watched jay's video jay from the cruise hip hop corner he said this he said 
and I mean, this is not something he just kind of came up with, but this is the truth. There's three. There's three sides. There's uh, the there's his side, their side, and then it's the side in the middle. You know, the truth. It's your story, his story, and the truth. <laughs> you know, the truth always falls sometimes within the middle. I think that. Uh, are we gonna get the the full gist of everything from different perspectives? I mean, no. I mean, we can only go by what we heard from John Gibbs, and we can only go by what we heard from Ruslan. We can kind of make an assumption of what we personally think. I think this is an unfortunate situation where the Dream Junkies were really making some good music. I I love the Dream Junkies. I, I thought that Ruslan was at his best, in my personal opinion, when he was a part of the Dream Junkies. Now he does make music now, and I, I feel like it's not. I feel like it's not on the Dream Junkies level because with the Dream Junkies, they had so many different elements that was added to the bunch. And with Ruslan, you're only getting that one perspective. So I think this, and Ruslan said this, it is extremely hard to mix business with friendship because what happens is that when, when money starts being made and you have to start making these decisions, it can get really dicey really quick. And I don't think that Ruslan... And John Gibbs, and even believe, should have stopped doing business. But I understand John Gibbs and his situation. He wanted to really do things on his own terms. And I really wish that they could kind of chop it up, talk about these different things. It'd be kind of dope if they could kind of get on a live together and kind of hash out some things. Because the public really wants to know what was what's really good. And Ruslan, and Ruslan showed you the splits. He was very transparent. I don't know what the situation was or or, or how. It, we don't know. He even talks about the whole situation when they were signed to um, to Interscope. The Dream Junkies were actually signed to Interscope. And how that they was going to leverage that situation to kind of leverage each other's career, John Gibbs, R- Ruslan, and also Believe. So what does this tell me? Artists, if you're watching this, always – Look out for the best interest of yourself. Uh, don't sign these deals. Don't do these different uh, uh, publishing things. Don't don't do the different. Uh, it's, it's a thing that people are doing now, where they're getting, they're paying, or they're giving up fifty percent of their streaming income for promotion, unless that is something that you want to do, and that the sacrifice that you're willing to take to get to this certain level. Because if you're le- if you're a label, and you have an artist that has zero leverage and the label is actually making you pop, you don't have a, a skin in the game. But if you're an artist and you already have leverage, why sign your leverage away to try to get a look? So I think artists artists need to become more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, more a uh, business savvy when it comes to that. And this is very unfortunate because they were signed to like 2011. John Gibbs, so Reverend John Gibbs, uh, uh, what, what <laughs> it, it was Soul Rebel and it was Four Seasons were really dope albums. They <laughs> were amazing albums. So I'm just glad that this conversation has happened. And for artists, you have to know your worth. You you have to know your worth. You have to understand. Like, look here, man. The music business is quote unquote not quote unquote. It's a business. <laughs> you know, it's a business. People are trying to make money. People are trying to feed their family. And people are going to get over on you if they feel like they can. And I'm not saying Ruth Lyon got over on, on John Gibbs. I'm just speaking in general. So I here's what I need you to do. I need you to let me know what you think about the situation. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think, man? What do you think? Do you think that Ruth Lyon has a point? I, I think that as both sides has a point. Both sides can feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not sitting here and say, well, John Gibbs can't feel this way because, bro, he has a perspective. He has a situation. He he experienced things, whether right, wrong, and different. He has experienced these things, and he has a story to tell. Same thing as Ruslan. He has a story to tell. He has his own opinion about, not uh, opinion, uh, perspective, excuse me, on the situation. John Gibbs has his own perspective. Ruslan has his own perspective. So we look at these different things like, yo, what, how can we learn from this? Artists, get a lawyer, know your worth, and figure out your goals. If, if the situation don't align with your goals, don't do it. Point blank, period. 
So let me know what you think about the comment section below. Again, it's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, and please don't forget all three. Lucky Murray back with another CHH Now. And yes, next week, I'm going to start posting regularly on CHH Now. I'm probably going to write an article Monday. Uh, how not to get ripped off by any label, whether it's Christian or whatever. You got to be smart, man. Artists in 2020, you got to take your career in your own hands. You know why? Because nobody cares about your career but you. Let me know what you think about the comment section below. But uh, until next time, people.